Vex sells brand new kit and it comes with a bunch of cool stuff. And so it's separated into generally four different categories. You got miscellaneous, electronic, your fittings, you kind of have your regulators, and then you have your piston slash tank. So I think the first thing we're gonna go over would be the electronics part. So the electronics are composed of your double acting solenoids and your your analog cables, which basically plug into the your double acting solenoids and control if they're on or off. Next you have your pistons. So these are obviously the main part of pneumatics. This is a pneumatic rod or a pneumatic piston. Um, this is double acting. This fitting pushes the air, air comes out. This here, air comes back in. Um, the kit comes with a long, medium, and short. Uh, my sister team is using the medium one, so imagine this one's a medium, but they all work the same. Um, yeah. And then you obviously have the tank. It has a 150 PSI limit, but you're only legally allowed to fill it up to 100 PSI. And I believe it is something like 200 milliliters uh, volume. Um, you're gonna have to put me on that. But um, you also have your fittings. So these are composed of the fittings that you screw onto the pistons and um, you also screw them onto your pneumatic solenoids. Um, you have your handy 90 degree fittings, which work the exact same way. They're just angled in a weird way. And then you also have um, your T fittings. These don't screw into anything. These are straight just for um, your tubing. So next we'll talk about tubing. Um, this is obviously the, the basic tubing. Um, that's how you kind of feed everything, move your air around your systems. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory. That's where all the air comes through. This is what we call a shutoff valve. So when you turn this, it basically closes, closes a door and lets air and makes it so air cannot pass through. So, and you can open it, um, air comes through obviously. Um, Generally, teams will use this for filling up their air, but I don't, I don't really use them. So, I mean, they're cool. And then you obviously have your tubing cutter. These are actually really nice. You give your, grab some tubing, you can kind of set it in here, and then kind of just pinch it, and then you can press it, snip it, obviously give you a piece of tubing. You'll probably want to do it a bit bigger than this, but yeah. So, and the last thing, we have all your regulators. So this is what we call a flow regulator. Basically, it makes the piston extend a lot slower, so it'll go like instead of normally when it'll go like um, Then in here, you have um, the pressure regulator. So there's a big difference between these two. This is a flow regulator, and this is a pressure regulator. This adjusts how much pressure the, your pistons use, so it'll use less pressure and um, it'll make them weaker. Um, or you can just kind of leave that stronger, but generally that they'll use to make your pistons weaker. Use up less air, kind of for less strong mechanisms, obviously. Um, you have your little like plungers or blockers. You can put these into all the fittings, kind of like so, kind of just press it in and it'll keep air from coming out. Um, I'll show you how to use them later. But basically, this is the same thing for tubes. I'll put one in here as well. Um, when you're taking either your plunger or your tubing out, you want to press down on this little red tab. You can kind of see it's like kind of spring, um, but you press down and then you kind of pull it out carefully. One of my sister teams had these snap and you really just want to be really careful when you're taking them out. Um, and it's the same thing for tubing. You kind of just press it down, press this red piece down and you can kind of just pull them out. So yeah. And then you also have just kind of a I don't know the exact name, but it shows the pressure. So you can kind of hook it up to your pneumatic tank and then it'll tell you how much pressure you have. All right, so now I have the double acting pneumatic solenoid set up. And pretty much there's three main aspects of it. These are your two outputs. And then what's a lot different from the old version of the double acting pneumatic solenoids is that these two that are sitting on the outside Air can always pass through this, and that's how air is fed into like the, uh, the solenoid. Um, so this, these two are constantly, air is always flowing through. 
and then your outputs are here. Here is how you kind of plug it in. You kind of just press down. There's a little thing you can press down here. You can kind of pull it out, and then you kind of just push it in right here. That's how you code it. I'll show you how to um, like manually um, test your pneumatics in a second. There's two different ways. Actually, first you want to do is you want to connect up to a tank, obviously. So you'll have your tank, and then you want to have something going from here and to here, feed it into the solenoid. If you have nothing else, you can put a plunger in here um, to block up the air. And then you can have these two um, fittings have pi uh, tubing coming out, and then you can connect it to your double acting piston, which I'll show in a second. But um, there's these two like orange little things right here. These are actually buttons. These are, this is one of the ways to like manually change um, the piston state. So yeah, um, I'm gonna demonstrate kind of how all this works in a second. Okay, so what we have here is kind of like a basic setup of how like you can hook up a piston. So obviously we have the tank and it's, I put a fitting onto the this part of the tank and then I put a, uh, I connected it to the solenoid and I plunged this side of the solenoid because we don't need it to go to anything. And then I have, I put two fittings onto the double acting piston. The holes for the fittings are here and here, not on the same side, it's all on here and here. Um, and I just put the hitting fittings here. I use the 90 degree fittings just for it's kind of personal preference, whatever you want, whatever fits. Um, and this is kind of how the simple setup is. So when you want to fill up the tank, you unscrew this little piece right here, and then you want to get your compressor. Make sure to set it at 100 psi, and then you fill up your Mac tank. This one works by lifting the tail up pressing down you have to be really careful so you don't break anything obviously click this down and then I can just start my compressor all right and now to release it I just flip the tail up you'll hear some air pressure come out don't be scared it'll be fine so now that you have your air filled up and your whole thing connected we can test it so obviously you have your little buttons right here and then if you want to you can grab a screwdriver or something else that has kind of a small thing and then you can kind of press down and then obviously look extends and then when you release the button what happens is that all the air that comes in here is going to spew out this hole right here and then when you press the other one like this it'll retract so what happens when you press these buttons is that it opens little doors and air feeds in through this one or this this either one of these inputs and then it'll either extend or retract right now there's no air pass there's no air um feeding into it at all, so you can kind of just freely move it. But you know, I'll show, demonstrate it again. So when your pressure regulator is screwed in more, forgot to mention this, but the pressure regulator screws in just like a normal fitting does. It uses less air. I'll demonstrate that real quick. So it's kind of hard to do, but one hand, we'll press on the button, and then you can kind of see it's a little bit easier to kind of push down. So obviously it's using less pressure, it's a little bit less strong, but you can get more actuations out of it, obviously. A really good thing about the new pistons is that they use the normal size nuts. So you can use things like Keps nuts or the normal locks. I wouldn't recommend using a lock nut because it's pretty difficult to unscrew it because there's no way to attach like a wrench to it or something. So it'd be a little harder to remove the lock nut. So I just recommend using Keps nuts or the nuts they give you or the, just the normal hex nuts. This is the, like the pressure shower. I forgot, I still don't know the name, but it basically shows the pressure. The more you fill up, it's kind of self-explanatory. You can kind of just connect it in here, use a T-fitting, da 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 It's very self-explanatory, but yeah. So now I have the brain and the pneumatics kit. I'm gonna show you the second way you can kind of manually adjust the piston state. So once you have your analog cable, you can go into the side, and this is the opposite side of the battery cable, and then you can go in, and then here are your ports. There's like a little tab on the side of this, and then there's these little kind of divots on the things, so you can kind of tell which orientation, but generally it's the white wire always faces to the sky, or like faces the screen side. And you can just go in, press it in, kind of pretty carefully, um, but as you saw, the piston extended the second I plugged it in. So anytime you're plugged in your code, um, the piston will go to the neutral state. So what you can do, and this is the same with motors, um, but what you can do is go into devices 
and then there's a little triangle with like a little star like a multiplication sign in here you can press that and you see all your little different um ports that you have here so which is a through h and so this is the one that we can change and they're kind of it's kind of sensitive but you can kind of generally tell it but basically you just press this um and then you can change it but yeah and then you can do it with all the rest of the ones but i don't have any others plugged in right now so yeah so I did some testing and I realized that this wasn't a flow regulator. Earlier in the video, I said this was a flow regulator, but I was wrong. Uh, the Vex V5 kit, Max kit does not come with a flow regulator, but this is actually still pretty cool. So what this is, is kind of like a pressure adjuster. So let's say you filled it at like, like 200 PSI. What you could do is pull this out. So you can kind of push it up. So you can pull it out and then if you twist it, it might be hard to hear, but at some point you can hear air starts coming out and then it stops coming out. So what it does is you can adjust the pressure um, from here instead of just having to manually bleed the thing with a screw. So it's really actually really nice. And so to start the match, you can fill it up all the way, twist it uh, counterclockwise to release air and then it'll set it at the pressure and then you can twist it back and then you can push it down so you can't twist it anymore. But yeah, that's kind of what that is.